Boom, boom, ba boom, 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 ba boom, 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 He's Chinese this year, so he has to like hit up. Like he has to put his his nice hands up. Stool. <laughs> oh, he's got a stool. <laughs> it's a temp stool. They must. <laughs> they must have really sprung for the. Uh, they must have sprung for go all out. Oh yeah, you, you don't want to go to the Olympics looking like a hasty. I mean, you go to Beijing. There's no snow. They literally built a snow mountain. Bacteria snow. <laughs> Bacteria snow. That's exactly what it was. It's crazy. Did you know? I did not know this until this week. Okay. There is a, a single bobsledding event. Like just yeah. a one person bobsledding event. Isn't it called the mono sled? I don't know. But all I know is that a bunch of little ladies, like tiny ladies, got in this bobsled and went way down way fast. Really? By themselves. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. They're like little bitty tiny bobsleds. L- little baby bobsleds? Yeah. Oh, it's a little baby bobsled. Yeah. Oh, how cute. <laughs> <laughs> and they were on Zweizeiten at the <laughs> beginning. Like, <laughs> <sliding>. That's <laughs> pretty impressive, man. What about the two man luge? Okay, so the one man luge I can get behind, right? The two man luge somebody yeah, else somebody's is getting behind. Getting behind. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say when they get to the end of the finish line? What? Kick it. Well, hello out there, all you beautiful, creepy disco weirdos. Welcome to the 60th edition of the greatest podcast that's recorded this side of Tulsa. The big, bad, mamma jamma microphones towering across the grandiose plains of the high west Texas metropolis that is the hub city. Welcome to this little thing we call Fraternize with These Guys. I'm your humble host, Pastor Pinewood, and across from me today, the same as he is every day, Beasy. Beasy. I, I have a shirt on. Dude. I'm rocking some of the new merch, bro. It's not even primaries yet. We got to get past like you know you, you, you got to. You can you can never be too early to pregame on a campaign. Oh really? That's my slogan. Pregame on the campaign. Pregame on the campaign. <laughs> <laughs> That's got a nice I, ring to I it. I kind of dig that. That's not bad. That's not bad. So what is uh what's the uh what's so, the slogan here? So Other than pregame, pre-game on the campaign. On the campaign. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the uh, for those of you. Watching on the YouTubes. I thought you were going to say for those of you about to rock, and I was really going to get excited. I was about to rock! <laughs> By the way, we, I would play that. Uh, we get flagged hard. <laughs> not only flagged, but ACDC will flat block your podcast yeah. from coming out on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, we've, so, we've run into that already. Yeah, that's that's so. crazy. So if you want to go back and listen to Mistress for Christmas, that got us completely uh, taken off of YouTube for like... A full day, yeah. Because that's we, correct. <laughs> anyway, so, so on the uh, the campaign shirt, I so like that. This, this is one edition of the campaign shirt. It says uh, "Pinewood and Beezy 2023." Woo! It's got the uh, FWTG podcast season three. For those of you that are not following us, um, basically we are we're campaigning. We're campaigning for season three. That is correct. Uh, the end of this year, if uh, if the wives deem it acceptable, right, and profitable. I don't know about profitable. I, mean, I don't think we're going to get there, but, but um, at least manageable. Manageable. Yeah. yeah. Then uh, negligible, well, but, that's manageable. Always there. <laughs> but manageable. But <Yeah>. manageable. <laughs> Needless to say, <laughs> they're going to allow us season three, and uh, we need your help. Okay. Very so, good. I was going to make a uh, kind of sounds like your sex life. Yeah. Shh. Shh. You know, Where's negligible the and med- <laughs> well, where's that Olympic <laughs> timpanist? <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 That'd be awesome. That'd be a great joke. Right. That guy in there. I tell you what, man, driving down here, uh, I mentioned we're in the hub city, so we're in Lubbock. Yeah. Uh, which is in the old dog house today. In the dog house. And by the way, speaking of uh, copyright <laughs> stuff, so we got flagged another song, which was our, our, our famous dog house song. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So the guy that had four subscribers, uh-huh. apparently us using his music for 20 seconds, not okay. Yeah, not okay. So we got to come up with another doghouse song. Yep, and we have one that kind of sets an ambient mood. Yes, it and does. I like it. So we're gonna get started with this, and we'll see what you guys think. But I wanted to mention that driving down here, I'd see. I don't know, man. Like it's 
Maybe we pick it up here in just a minute when it starts feeling a little... But we got to, like, wait for it to get there. Uh, I mean, we can start it later. Who, who wants to listen to this in the doghouse? Well, that's why we're talking. <laughs> we talk over this part, <laughs> oh, and then once okay. it starts getting exciting, then we're like, ooh, <laughs> oh, yeah. It's oh. like it's like one of those really interesting, oh, uh, like, stranger things. Yeah, That's what it reminds buddy, me of. Yeah. yeah. So the doghouse is a kickback to the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Anyways. so uh, it's a work in progress. <laughs> yes. We'll so, see what we can come up with. <laughs> about that, yeah, we are in the doghouse again. Um, and I was going to mention that driving down here, the wind did not disappoint. It nope. blew bananas crazy today. Hey, here's the thing. Mid-February. Yeah. Literally mid-February. West, West Texas. I got in my car coming home from work today, 77 degrees outside. AC? I had to. Heck yeah, Dude, it me was too. So freaking hot. Yep. It's crazy. This morning, thirty-one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's officially that time of year. Yep. So I'm hoping we get a spring this year. Yeah. Well, last year was really cool, and we got some some moisture, so it was it was a nice spring. Yep. I hope we get something similar this year. I hope it doesn't yeah. go from like balls cold to a couple of days of transition, and then a hundred <laughs> degrees. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you like that? You like yeah. that? You like that? <laughs> Boom, hundy. <laughs> Triple digits. Like, ah, gosh. So, I don't know. You, you follow the Olympics at all? I mean... Not really. It's not my thing. There's a big stink right now. Oh, uh, yeah? There's a Russian. Oh, yeah. She's like 15. I heard about that. She popped a drug test. Yep. So, if they, if they take the gold away from her, they give it to second place, which is America, and mm. I don't follow any of this, but at the time, that would put America in the third place, I think. Oh, for really? gold medals. Yeah, I have so no idea. That's exciting. But I also, I think they're going to continue to let allow her to compete, which is weird. Well, they are because they're waiting for the the final, Ooh. Uh, the judgment on that. I see. So here's the funky thing about that. Every event that she competes in, yep. they're not doing medal ceremonies. Whoa. Yeah. Really? No medal ceremonies, no matter the outcome of it. Wow. Because they're still waiting for her drug test. That is bananas. <laughs> it's stupid. Holy cow. How so, weird. But okay. Interesting. It, speaking of the Olympics, the you know God what happened? God dang Russians. It, I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> Them sneaky <laughs> commies. <laughs> the Ruskies. By the way, the Ruskies are on the move again, man. Like, yeah. it's supposed to be tomorrow. Who cares? <laughs> what do you mean, who cares? Well, it's it's World War Three, brother. I mean, we're going to start bunkering, like, you know, out back. Uh, well, that's fine. I got a place. Okay. All right. I, I got us a place. By the way, just a little, you know, uh, public service announcement. If you don't have six months of food and water on hand, medical supplies, you should, you should probably work on that. Get you, get you a firearm. Yeah, at least one of those. At least yeah, get a firearm so you can steal somebody's six months supplies. There you go. <laughs> the easy's going the opposite route. We'll deal with it Fair when enough. it gets there. Fair enough. <laughs> I interrupted you, my Yeah, I was going to say, so the, the Olympics this past weekend, uh, not only did they have the Olympics, but it was it was the big game. Yeah, the, the big, Pooper Bowl. It the, was, uh, um, the kitty cats got beat by the Billy Goats. <laughs> so uh, that means football's over until... Okay. I was for this. I was going to go August or September. No. The USFL. Whoa. Did you hear about this? No, I did not. So, it I believe it is the United States Football League. Okay. They are kicking off in April. I think April 16th. Okay. So it's it's basically spring football. Beauty. Which is awesome because football season is never long enough. I agree 100%. And if I can watch something besides the NFL, I'm, yes. I'm all about it. Yes, 100%. But they've already got eight teams for this first season. Okay. You got the Michigan Panthers, hmm. the New Orleans Breakers, um, I guess because that's what levies do. <laughs> that, was, that was good. That was good. I like that. The Birmingham Stallions. <laughs> Okay. The Pittsburgh Maulers, because you're likely to get mauled in Pittsburgh. Oh, that, what's a mauler? Uh, it's a Gustav Mahler. He was a <laughs> classical German musician. <laughs> Heavy on the trumpets, I hear. <laughs> yes, and good trumpet stuffs. Um, the New, New Jersey Generals. Okay. The Tampa Bay Bandits. And the Houston Gamblers and the Philadelphia Stars. Okay, you know what? All of those names are better than the Washington Commanders. Every <laughs> single one of them. Agreed. Yeah. It's, 
Terrible, 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 name. terrible. I thought I, I thought the meme running around that was the best was the you replaced the redskin with the people who took over the redskins. <laughs> took over the redskins. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That was pretty funny. <laughs> uh, All right, good time. Did you watch the uh, the Super Bowl? I did. I actually watched the entire game. I will say, it was a good game. It it was decent. It you was know, decent it was game. it was clean penalty wise. Didn't until see a lot of penalties. Until the very end. Yes, until the yeah. end. at the beginning when that idiot ran off the bench into the ah. end zone <laughs> and it cost him yeah. ten yards. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, bro? You can't do that. I want to know. I want to know how many benched <laughs> players in the history of the NFL have cost their team ten yards. They should have. They should have tacked on an additional five because I'm pretty sure he had socks and flip flops. He did. Yeah. So. It should have been a 15-yard penalty and, encroaching. Yeah, and uh, judging by his, uh, you know, melanin, I don't think he's German, so I don't think there's an excuse uh, it's, there. Yeah, no excuse. No excuse whatsoever. But, but uh, yeah. I thought it was a good game. It was a pretty good game. Uh, they were a little a little lax on the uh, penalties yeah. for the first, oh, most of the game. Yep. Until the last yep. two minutes. But and then at the same time, man, I keep dropping. Because I want them to let them play. Let them play. I agree. So here's the funny thing. I was watching um, some some comparisons of the 2007 Pro Bowl game. Yeah, yeah. Versus this year's Pro Bowl game. Okay. And it was great because they had they. I don't I don't even know what Super the players, Bowl or Pro Bowl. The Pro Bowl. Okay, okay. So the Pro Bowl they did a little uh, shuffle pass. All right. The running backs running, and then they're just kind of like, uh, uh, uh. they're basically playing like two-touch. Right. They didn't want to tackle him. Yeah, they didn't want to get injured. Meanwhile, the next one, they cut to the 2007, and this dude gets blasted <laughs> so freaking hard. I'm like, man, it's, there's, I don't want to say they're a bunch of weaklings now, but I mean, I mean you know, when in Rome. <laughs> Have you ever been in an NFL game? Uh, no. I've been to one, and they're huge. Sure. Those dudes are huge. Yeah. And if you get hit by a huge dude running full speed, it's going gonna, it's gonna to mess you up. Yeah. If I could avoid getting messed up and still get that uh, that sweet check. That sweet, sweet NFL scratch. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm probably going to go ahead and two-touch. Yeah. But, you know, you go back to the late 70s. Oh, yeah. Leather helmets? No, bro. Bro. They're, they're out for blood. <laughs> that for was blood. Straight. That was rugby. <laughs> <laughs> that was rugby with NFL football rules. <laughs> that uh, John Madden documentary, God Rest His Soul. Yeah. He lost Madden not too long ago. About his coaching years. Mm-hmm. And he would he would have people come to the sidelines and their fingers would be like just completely back. opposite. Yeah. And they'd be like, tape it up, get back out there. Like they were out for blood, man. Just a totally different, totally different game. Oh yeah. But uh I and don't they know. weren't making the the stupid amounts of money that people are making no. now. They were like ten grand a season. <laughs> yeah. They had part time jobs yeah, right. <laughs> in off season. <laughs> Can you imagine going to get your shoes from an NFL guy and his face is all bloody and he's got his fingers wrapped and he's like, Can I help you with your shoes? And you're like, Bro, what's your <laughs> the I just saw alley. you? <laughs> They're spraying their spraying the shoes. Speaking of that, I do want to bring this up. So you watched the game. I'm sure you watched the commercials. Of course. I know where you're going. You, oh my god, dude. Did you great. not expect did you not expect in that bowling commercial when Donnie was behind the register spraying the shoes? So when it showed it cut to the feet. And it looked like yep. It looked like the Jesus. Yep, I'm with and you. And I was like, oh, please tell me the Jesus is walking in. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was lame. Freaking Peyton. I mean, <sighs> now the, I will say, silly. right at the beginning of that commercial, when they show the outside of the bowling building. Oh yeah. I don't think it was the same one in the movie, but as soon as they showed that, I was like, oh, oh, ooh, a little Lebowski. <laughs> and then they st- showed Buscemi, and I was like, yeah, yeah. it was awesome. But <laughs> no, nah, it fell short yeah, after right. that. Yeah. yeah. I figured they could have brought some more in, but it was okay. Yeah, I'll give them credit. Yeah. I'll give them credit. I'll tell you what, let's give some credit to some folks in our uh, circle, neck Ooh. of the woods. First one is Eccentric Brewing. You go down there and check them out. If you're in Midland or around the Midland area, just go down there and see them. Yeah. Go tell them we sent you. Of course. Have a, have a libation. And they've uh, got a new one that just dropped today. Really? Today? Yeah. And bro, I've yeah. already talked to Aaron. Okay. And he said he's gonna hold us some if okay. they get close to selling out. What is it? It's a raspberry stout. Ooh. I that know. Sounds delicious. I know. Okay. So get down there. Yep. 
Go get you some raspberry stout. But apparently not too much because I want to try. No, something. no, no, no. Buy them out because he said he's going to hold us some. So mm. we're not worried about that. Okay. But get you some of that raspberry stout and then let us know how it is. Yes. Before we go before in a couple we weeks. Go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you can also check out their website, eccentricbrewing.com. And I did check. There is no co. It's just eccentricbrewing.com. Oh, fair enough. The best place that I've found them is on Facebook. You can find their, their Facebook page, and they put stuff all the time. Yeah. And Jamie then, does uh, a lot of live stuff. He does. So. He's very good at that. So mm-hmm. trying to grow that business. It is a wonderful brewery. It is. And some wonderful folks. Also, interestingly, we have a new sponsor. Oh. Now, the details are still being worked out. Okay. But our buddy Heston has an investment oh, opportunity, it looks like, that he's going to brewing, if you Ooh. will. And um, he's going to kind of include us in that uh, rise to fame. He's going to be like the new Bernie Madoff, but not a swindler. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. I'm sure he loves being contributed with uh, Uh, the likes of that Bernie Madoff. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure he appreciates that one. So anyway. I didn't say anything. I know. uh, I saw it in your eyes, though. I agreed. (laughs) All right. So stick around for that. I think by the next time we record, I think we'll have some of those okay. those things ironed out. But uh, stay tuned. And then also, if you would like to help support the show, we would greatly appreciate that. You can head over to Patreon, patreon.com slash FWTG podcast. You can join up there. That gets you a f- extra podcast once a month, the Hidden mm-hmm. Revival. And that comes out next week, sucker. It does. Number nine. Numero nine. Ski. Feels like we've been doing it longer than just nine. Yeah. But uh, they're all good. Yeah, that we have a lot of fun with that. One. And speaking of Patreon, we have a new subscriber. Yes, we do. A new live shipper. All right, Matt Hill. All right, Matt. Woohoo! I wish we had a button we could we could hit. <laughs> hey, please, I, hug, please. I tell you what, we could do in honor of Matt. Boom, boom, ba, boom, 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 <laughs> ah, thanks, Matt. We love you. And nobody's listening anymore. So Good how about we get out of that and do some little on the wagon articles? Okay, let's do it. Oh snap! Retro on music. Let me uh, let me revamp here for just a second. Okay, on the wagon articles. <laughs> on the what? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah! I'm a wagon That was pretty good. <laughs> so if you guys haven't realized, We've we're now we're now on YouTube, <laughs> and what happens is if you put stuff on YouTube, see on on the podcast, you see stuff, what happened was we can do anything we want. Sure, we can use any music we want. It doesn't matter. It's not behind a paywall. It's like the wild wild west when it comes to podcasting. But YouTube is much more refined. And they got uh, legalese crap going on. All over the place. And so what happens is if you load it, it will detect whether or not there is copyright material in your video. Mm -hmm. And we are inundated with copyright material. And I'll tell you right now, what's bullshit about that is that doesn't even count towards our listens. Nope. Nope. Not even a little (laughs) bit. So... Anywho, heifers, we're trying to change things so we don't get copyright striked. Yes. So copyright striked, stricken, stripped, stroked, not (laughs) stroked. (laughs) I be stroking. (laughs) All right, on the wagon articles this week uh, with less great music, but we'll get that ironed out. Yes. Ohio mayor is concerned ice shanties could lead to prostitution. Ice shanties. Ice shanties. The mayor of an upscale city outside of Cleveland is wow. making headlines for a remark in a city council meeting that allows ice fishing shanties on a city lake, and he claims that if we allow ice shanties on the lake, it could lead to prostitution. <laughs> I, have you ever been in an ice shanty before? No, but I want to. I desperately I, want to go ice so fishing. I, I have never been in one myself, but I've seen a ton of videos. You are Bundled up. <laughs> I mean, I've seen grumpy old men. A, you're on a it frozen does, lake. It doesn't man. look comfortable. No, not at all. And then I think Pirate Hunter can actually vouch yes. for this because he does this every year. But I can't imagine you would want to take your clothes off long enough to prostitute. <laughs> Definitely not make it a, a career out of it. No. <laughs> that, that would be pretty funny, that though. That would be pretty funny. <laughs> Just knocking on the shanties. <laughs> Housekeeping, you do it to fluffy. 
<laughs> Go Nod, away! Nod okay. three times. <laughs> Housekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> all right so oh, in the city council meeting he said he wanted to raise some quote-unquote data points during the discussion about whether to permit people to fish during the winter he said i want an <laughs> ice shanty on hudson springs park for x amount of time if you allow ice fishing with ice shanties well that leads to another problem prostitution and apparently he yelled it <laughs> which is I mean, hilarious not? he said later he tried to clean it up he said, uh, in my time as a television reporter, I would cover law enforcement agencies that have arrested people for prostitution in ice shanties. So apparently he's got so some first-hand experience with the, uh, with okay. the ice shanties. Okay, okay. Now look. I mean, I, you got to keep it warm in that bunkhouse somehow. Somehow. You know, you got to fog up the window or, you know, something. <laughs> so if the ice shanty is a rocket, don't come and knock it, I guess is what he's trying to say. I guess that's what we're trying Actually, to get. What he's trying to say is, <laughs> I'm not going to let that ice shanty be a rocking. Yeah, that's right. So you don't get no knockings. <laughs> you don't get no knockings. <laughs> I tell you, can you imagine somebody bringing up the the desire to fish? Yeah. To the government, I'm going to go to the government and say, "Hey, can I fish?" Mm-hmm. And they're going to be like, "No." And the reason is. Because we'll think you're going to hire a prostitute. If, if I let you fish, well, by God, there's a chance that you're going to hire a prostitute. You're going to get some whores. Now, I will say, I've, I've been in a lot of cabins. I've, I've been in a lot, lot of fishing. I've been in a lot of fishing trips. Not one time have I ever thought, you know what go good with this bass fishing a trip? A little hooker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a little hooker, line, and sinker. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Oh, that's good. Go right out and reel me one up right now. I just, I, I can't Why imagine. Bring her in on stink bait. Stink bait. <laughs> we chum the water a little bit down around Fourth Street. We just have to pick one up. Oh man! I was using my trolling motor and everything. <laughs> trolling for hookers. Trolling for hookers. Oh, oh gracious. man. So anyway, I thought that was great, um, and surprisingly, uh, this man was ridiculed relentlessly yeah. online. <laughs> I, I can imagine. <laughs> All right, so uh, be wise out there. Don't go trolling for hookers when you're fishing <laughs> in your ice shanty, because it will lead to bad things, apparently. <laughs> exactly. I mean, rule number one, keep the prostitutes out of the fishings. <laughs> the fishings. Oh, man. That's pretty good. I love it. All right, let's do a little libations. Let's, let's do some drankings. Libations! Man, I've got a good cigar lit. Yeah? I haven't had a beer three weeks. Nice. I'm ready. Do it. I'm ready. So tell us what we got, because it's a little different than normal. So this is kicking back to, man, I think 12, 13, 14-ish. Yeah, somewhere in there. Early so teen er, early, years. The, in the early <laughs> teens. We're in the early teens, and we got our first sip of the mead. Yeah, I think we had two in a row. We did. Okay. We had the Viking's blood, and then we had the one from the Honey Creek there in That's uh, right. Canyon. That's right. So this one is from the same company that made the Viking blood. Beauty. The Dunks Mjord. Okay. And this is called Odin's Skull. Beauty. And they got a... Man, this, I'll say, this freaking bottle is no slouch. Yep. Give that give that guy a handle. Oh, man, that is... <laughs> some thick glass. Holy cow. I know you're going to read these here in a minute, but oh my gosh, that's scary almost. Yeah. Okay. So... Odin Skull is a mead, and for those of you that are just now are, are not privy to this information, right. but a mead is a honey wine. Hmm. So this will get an asterisk yep. in our Libations as Library did the update. Others. That is correct. So, but this one um, has an interesting... I, I went to the website okay, and couldn't find a whole lot because I don't read Nordic <laughs> or uh, Dutch. Scandinavian. Danish, I think, is what it was. I'm going to go Scandinavian. It was, it was Danish because it's, it's a product of Denmark. <laughs> I'm going to go Scandinavian. <laughs> Scan, Scandinavian. <laughs> I'm going to go with Viking. We don't read Viking. We don't, I don't read Viking well. <laughs> All right, um, so what did you find out? So not much, but 
We're just going to go off what the bottle says. Fair enough. So this is a Nordic honey wine. It's made with sour apple juice, hops, and it's added cinnamon. It is 19% ABV. Good Lord. Yes, sir. And they got a pretty pretty solid description on the back of the okay. bottle. It says, Odin, one-eyed and long-bearded, often carrying a spear, might be one of the most complex characters in Norse mythology. Mm. This brew is intended to honor Odin's name. Master of Inspiration and Fury. Inspirado. Search for Inspirado. <laughs> Viking Inspirado. Uh, made solely from 100% natural ingredients. Served slightly chilled in a wine glass or warm as the mold wine. Odin Skull ages well. There may be yeast sediment in the bottom of the bottle. Hmm. Did so you, we're going to uh, do the... Nice. <clears throat> do a little tip a little tap agitation. Yep. Like we do with the uh, bottles of Blood and Honey. That's right. Anything that is unfiltered is probably best to do. Or, or yeah, unfiltered Hefeweizens. Yeah. That's really where give you want to do that. Give them yeah. a little love. All right. And because the bottle weighs 30 pounds, <laughs> we're going to be putting it into uh, some some vessels here. So, yeah. So and, uh, uh, we got one of the one of the old school fraternized with these guys mugs that was made very lovingly. And unfortunately, no longer. Yeah. That was a one and done thing. One and done. If you got one, you are, you are a lucky. true OG. I'll <laughs> tell you that. I don't even have one anymore. So uh, you're lucky. So I don't have that or a koozie. I know. Like, what the French? You're not getting either. Now, this guy, the Libations Library, now we can still get these. Is that correct? Uh, maybe. We maybe. made those in-house. Oh, that's right. That was, that was a test run. Okay. Not bad. No, not I mean, bad. it looks like it. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's pour a little bit. Okie dokie. And give it a whirl. Here's the little... Oh, oh yeah, that's a beautiful sound. All right, so we're gonna like go. That. We're gonna be very sparing on this because I don't know. Get some more creepy '80s music. Yeah, buddy, I like it. Sorry, sorry, I didn't fade it in. Not doing so good on the uh, on the DJ in tonight. You're, you're terrible. Uh, it's not great. Had better evenings. Well, it smells fantastic. It smells sweet. Well, it is a honey wine. All right. Smells like cinnamon and then. Smells like fireball. Yes, <laughs> it does that. Ooh. Wow. Okay. It's nowhere near as sweet as I figured it was going to be. I agree with you there. Definitely alcohol heavy. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. 19% will do it. Yeah, you feel it. You feel it going down. Instantly. Uh, wow. How big is that bottle? Uh, 750. Wow. Yeah. So it's almost it's almost in that I, I say almost it is in that range of a liqueur, yeah. You know, same as probably a little bit more than uh, Bailey's. Yeah, I think Bailey's is only fourteen or fifteen. Okay, just off the top of my head. All right, um, I like it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm not a huge fan of all the spices. That's not really my thing, but I think it it mixes well and it's balanced well. It's still pretty sweet for me. Yeah, it is. It is fairly sweet. Yep. To be expected, yes, I would assume I, from a honey mead. I agree. Um, so I'm not knocking it there. The spices, I definitely, I definitely get the cinnamon. Yes, for sure. Um, and I like that. Yeah. A lot. Is there is there a clove in there? Did it say anything? It about didn't cloves? say anything about clove. Okay. But it says sour apple juice, which I don't. I guess kind of get that a little bit on the yep. front end, but it's kind of matched by the. Uh, punch in the face i wonder if that was just <laughs> well it was that their catalyst for the for the the fermentation it could have okay. been it could well, have been I, I dig it i really do um i could not drink very much of it oh no you know just just a couple of swigs <laughs> yeah would be this is not me. a this is not a uh have one of these a bottle at night nope. kind of deals that's and, gonna and no carbonation no carbonation yep which i kind of like about that too well where are you feeling where are you feeling in the mead category and then we'll do your overall overall so for a mead compared to the other ones we did it's not as syrupy as the previous ones right so that's a, that's a, a that's little a win. little thinner yep it's got some bitters to it almost like it's almost reticent of an old fashioned okay so when you get that that sweet orange when the old fashioned but mm-hmm. also the bitters that are in there mm-hmm. with the whiskey so you kind of get a little bit of that which I, I do like um but it's, it's just too sweet for me. So as a mead, I'm going to put it a little higher, I think, than the last ones. I have no idea because it's been too long. But I'm going to put it <laughs> about a 74. 74 for the meads, eh? 
What about as an overall end of the libation? I'm sorry, 74 for the overall. <clears throat> I'm going to do about let's do let's do a mid 80s for the mead. Cuz based on the other ones that we've had, I like this one more than them. So, so like, we'll say like 87? 80, no, 85. 85. Well, let's, let's don't get carried away. It's not like they sponsor the show or anything. <laughs> right. And we don't we don't speak Hwangy Bungy very well. So <laughs> it'd be difficult to get them to sponsor. That's true. Would you like to sponsor the podcast, please? <laughs> We've been drinking your meat. It's very nice. <laughs> we invite you twice, Shanti. <laughs> I, I got the prostitute done way. It's a very nice ice shanty. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder if they put a red fishing rod outside. <laughs> it's like, like, like a sock on the door. Of a sock, they just have a red fishing rod. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, well, for me, I think overall, I really like it. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with an 80. Okay. Because I could drink this. Yeah, I could too, for sure. I could it's, probably drink this enough where it, it'd cross a line. Definitely... A seasonal, like Christmas time ish. Oh yeah, for I sure. I think this would be stellar warm. I think you're right. A little bit of because because we, we're drinking cold. it cold. Yep, yep. So I think I think warm. Mm. This would be amazing. Yeah, this would be great. Warmed <clears throat> up in a, in a mug, by a campfire with one of those little uh, cinnamon sticks poking out the top of it. Cinnamon, put yep. a little cinnamon in. You could in share there. it with your prostitute in the ice <laughs> shanty. In the, in the mean, shanty, it'd be perfect. It'd be really good. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Okay. Right. As, as for the mead category, yeah, I'm gonna give it a 90. Ooh, getting on up because that's a that's a good mead. Mm. That's a good mead. Now, do we have any idea on price point? Well, this was actually gifted to me. Okay, nice from my dad. Oh, it's a little little free 99. Huh? Yeah, and, and I believe I believe this bottle was 20, 20 or thirty bucks, something like that. Okay. that Probably about thirty. Right. Yeah. I mean, essentially, you're buying a liqueur. Yeah. So if you go buy a bottle that size, you're looking at 20 to 30, sometimes 40 or 50, depending yeah. on what you're getting. Right. All right. So um, I, I dig it, man. I dig it. It's different than anything I'm going to drink on a regular basis. Yeah, oh, yeah. But uh, not, yeah, it's not definitely not. It's it's not one of those ones that you're going to you're gonna keep around for weekend drinking. That's right. That's right. But it's, I, I mean, like I said, a seasonal beverage. This is for sure seasonal. Okay. Like I, a nice cold day. Yep. Have a nice warm yep. Odin skull. I could see this. If you could drink it out of a skull, that'd be legit. That would be legit. We'll have to work on that. Okay. I could see us dipping into this in Colorado at the end of the day. For sure. Yeah, when the when the temp's going down, yeah. and the light sprinkle in the evening. Yeah, got a yeah, little buddy. fire going. Uh huh. Yep. Crackle. Yep. I like it. Yep. All right, you want to do a little questions? Let's do it. I think you got number one this week. I friend. do. I do. Hit me with your best shot. <clears throat> this is an interesting one. My neighbor is pregnant, and she believes the Wi-Fi has some kind of radiation and will harm the child. So she asks me to turn my Wi-Fi off. How should I respond to her? Mm. Take a look, woman. It's not the Wi-Fi. It's the five G. <laughs> I, I don't know. It doesn't sound like this is somebody you can reason with. No, you certainly can't. You certainly can't. This is. It's like flat earthers. You can't really talk to a flat earther because they're dead set. Yeah. In their insane thoughts. Right. And everybody's lying. Yeah. So there's no everybody's out to get you. You can't you can't prove anything because any kind of proof that you give is just well it's a cover up, right? Oh yeah. So let's let's go with the assumption that she is inconsolable from her belief. That there's no there's no way around it, there's no proof you could offer. I say I say you just lie. <laughs> I mean, I'm always down with that. And look, I mean, that's pastoral <laughs> advice, right? Yeah, I turned it off. I don't know why. I don't know why your baby came out sideways. Look, Rhonda, I took. I did. Rhonda. I did what you asked me to do. Like, I'm sorry. If, if if your baby's you know rolling around in your womb or something, you think it's radiation. That's not on me. That's that's on somebody else. So go bother the other neighbor. Better yet, turn off your cell phone. 
Yeah. And uh, make sure you don't have any plants growing around because, you know, they send off little weird wooby jubies. Wooby jubies. I like that So we, we can't have plants. So you better... I tell you what. The best place for you, Rhonda, is a room that's got some padded walls until you have your baby. That'll protect you from everything. Maybe a locked door. I'm still in the firm camp that you tell her and you could draft up. I mean, you, you, however crazy you want to get with this, create your own website. Ooh. <clears throat> we're, going, so, we're going long uh, game. We're, we're going long con with this one. <laughs> okay. You start your own website. Wi-Fi over 5G. Ooh. Okay. We're just just spitballing here. All right. So, it's a long website. So, it doesn't roll off the tongue very well. Uh, well, I, we, we can work on the name. We can work on the name. But basically, you work this out. You send flyers. And promote your your website and okay. everything, and then you let her know. Hey, have you seen this website? It's not the Wi Fi that's causing it. It's the five G uh, cell phone towers. Do you have a cell phone? Grab it, break it. <laughs> it's for your own good and your baby. And your baby. I'm looking out for your child, ma'am, Rhonda. <laughs> Rhonda, you stupid baby, <laughs> afflicting it to five G waves. Putting him 5G's in his <laughs> noggin. It's going to come out kicking and screaming and punching other babies. Because <laughs> yes. that 5G. Hey, it sounds like a superhero baby. That little little devil child. Yeah, we call him the G G G G G. That's what he says because he got the 5G waves bouncing <laughs> in his noggin. Today, Junior. I'll tell you what you could do is you could just tell her you got rid of the Wi Fi and then just rename your router. Oh. Speaking of, what, you got any good ones? No. Man, I have gone down a wormhole before. Yeah. On looking for crazy router names. Oh. Because I think about that, yeah. <clears throat> you know what mine's I, named? What? Uh, 1278QX31825. <laughs> <laughs> it's named WZ153476. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I don't know how to change it to something creative, or I would, because that well, sounds hilarious. Yeah, I, I got into <laughs> some of that a long time ago, changing my names on the routers. Okay. And. There is some really good ones out there. Like, okay. I'll give you a couple of them. Um, probably an all-time favorite. It pops up on every list. FBI surveillance oh, van. Yeah, that's a good one. I've seen that before. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. And then a couple of good ones I'd never heard of. Uh, New England clam router. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's good. I like that. <laughs> go, go, router rangers. <laughs> Go, go, Browder <laughs> Rangers! Yeah, man. That's good stuff. And then I'll, I'll leave you with this one. The Promised Land. Oh, that's... L-A-N. That's genius. Boom! Yeah, that's good. That's yeah, good. Yeah, buddy. And not everybody would get that. It's kind of like a subtle... Yeah, it's, it's like, kind of just oh, really Promised Land, I don't get it. <laughs> Why is L-A-N capitalized? <laughs> What's a land? If you have to ask, you can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. You just three? I figured you'd come up with some more. Oh, man. I've got thousands of them. Well, we'll have to re- come back to that at some well, point because that's pretty good. Oh. What's going some, on out there? I don't know. Somebody just got robbed. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was thinking somebody is mad at us for using our router. Uh, uh, well, I, pirate. Po- poison in their baby. <laughs> it's not It's not the Wi-Fi. It's the 5G. <laughs> so have you seen the 5G towers everywhere? Like, all of a sudden, they're everywhere. Oh, yeah. I like them. Have you seen the ones that they describe or the... Uh, disguised as yes, pine trees that's hilarious <laughs> it's like the crappiest looking pine tree in the entire united states you're like what's wrong with that tree oh i get it uh, <laughs> why is there a pine tree in west texas that's a 70 <laughs> foot pine tree we don't even got pine trees out here <laughs> how do they get the water to make that thing grow Shh, i started up real slow <laughs> it, is, it is kind of funny like it, okay they're not ugly, ugly, but they're definitely untoward, right? They're yeah. not beautiful. So I wonder whose idea it was. Like, look, just make it look like a tree. It's an engineer. You know it was an engineer. I don't think so. Yeah. I think an engineer is like, it's a it's a cell tower. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares what it looks like? It, it's powering your phone. Yeah, but this is a very distinguished <laughs> neighborhood. It's probably that same city council Frickin guy that was, that was warning about <laughs> prostitution. <laughs> we can't have the prostitutes in our eye shanties, and we can't have these dang cell towers looking like metal prostitution poles. <laughs> prostitution poles? They're naked up there. We got to put some clothes on. Put some tree put clothes. Some, put some tree clothes on the dirty ass poles. <laughs> Oh, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> it would be funny if they started doing that and they did the wrong tree for the area. 
<laughs> like they did put a pine tree in like L.A. That's so, spruce. <laughs> What the hell is Spruce doing out here? <laughs> well, yeah, but you could have gone with a pine tree. What if you, what if you put a palm tree in like South Dakota or something? <laughs> so that's a real small, a real small uh, antenna. AT and T, you ain't fooling nobody, man. Oh, that's that's not an AT and T tower. That's a HughesNet tower. <laughs> they can't afford them big towers. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, we're probably going to get fired for that one. Yeah, maybe so. That's pretty good, though. I, I like, like it. it. All right, you ready for question number two? Hit me. This one's got a little bit of layering to it. Okay. It's something we may be able to talk about because you got one of these little youngins coming up. Oh, yay. Okay. Comes from Adam. <laughs> okay. Adam said, my son is a sophomore and a star athlete. Made the varsity as a freshman, always starts, head quarterback, etc. Okay. He was penalized for failing his algebra class by two points this past period and will be forced to sit out for two full games. I believe this is outrageous, and is there any recourse I can take through the school system? No. So other than going to the teacher on bended knee or with pitchforks, probably not Or with anything. an invitation to the ice shanty. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on what kind of teacher it is. I mean, if his name's John... Yeah, maybe maybe not that. Or maybe, maybe. that. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> it depends. You know, are we fishing or are we trolling? <laughs> we, we fished or we trolling. <laughs> <laughs> so it does present an interesting conundrum. That whole past no, play. No, it doesn't. Okay, it doesn't to you at no, all. No, not to me. Okay. N- not at all. Because I saw this a lot uh, in high school where the star athletes got favoritism. Yeah. And they were allowed to kind of... Yes. Fudge and smooth yes. over things. But they were allowed to do that because of past play. They, they they were allowed to do those things because it said if they didn't pass, they couldn't play. Right. So if you didn't have that, and they're just going to screw off and, and not pass their classes, what teacher's going to care at that point? I'm going to be harder on them. Yeah. If I don't have the coach coming into my office every 15 minutes, well, the other, in, fix in, is great. In my high school, we had a lot of the coaches were teachers too. So That's fair. That yep. didn't help. I mean, hell, we had, I think one of my history teachers was a coach, one of the football coaches. Yep. We didn't do anything. I was going to say, yeah, everybody passed. Dude, the day before we took our <laughs> final exams, he says, all right, here's the deal. I'm going to give you a pretest. You're allowed to write anything down on one piece of paper, and you can bring that one piece of paper with you to the test. I was like, "Oh, this is answers." <laughs> <laughs> so, so are you aced, saying ace that exam? <laughs> I, I, I see what you're saying. It, it was an easy class. It was a blow off class, man. Well, and that's that's fair. But so to answer this question, no, there's probably not much you can do. No, there's Other not. Than, there's nothing you should do. You should get onto your kid. Okay, now, for slacking off. Okay, so that's a good point. All right. <clears throat> but on the flip side, on the flip side of the coin, I was never good at math, like at all. Really struggled, and I missed my sophomore all-state auditions because I failed a math class. Should have been better at math, bro. Uh, there is that. Okay, fair. However, should have got some tootins. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it would have helped. It probably would have, and and there's definitely some that I could have done better for sure. However. Take a kid who knows he's going to be an athlete, knows he's going to be a musician, whatever. Should we take every child through the exact same <sighs> rigors as every other child? No. So the standardization that's, is what bugs me the That's most. the problem with American education anyways. Yeah. Is everything is geared towards standardized tests. Right. It's not... You don't have... Even in private schools, I believe. Of course, I wasn't a private school kid, so I Ain't couldn't either. vouch. Right. But... I know in public school, everybody was, I think at the time we were taking the TOS test. That's right. It was called. That's what mine was. And everybody studied for the, like the month before you're just cram, 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 just study guide after study guide, practice test for this stupid test. Right. We lost a month worth of education. That's right. Studying for a stupid test. Yeah. And then when the test was over, the school year was done. Even if there's yeah. like a month left, yeah, the teacher's exactly. like, ah, oh, I'm done. Who gives a shit? Movies. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you guys seen Shawshank Redemption? <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all are third graders? Oh, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll pick something else. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Shawshank, you're not going to matter. 
<laughs> this is going to prepare some of y'all for your future lives. Trust me on this. <laughs> some of y'all probably won't graduate in high school. You're going to jail. So you're going to need to learn yeah. how to get out of here. Yep. <laughs> Definitely going to have to learn how to fight off those uh, those we- sisters. Those- <laughs> but Yikes. I mean, that's rough. It, it, that's a completely different um, bugaboo to handle uh, because I, I agree. It, I think it all rolls into something similar. I, I think I think schools should be here's here's what it is, and you can go through it and you can do well or not do well. But at the end of the day, it's really on you, not the educator, right? And if you're going to excel in creativity, the arts, or something, and, and math isn't your strong point. I have a hard time with people holding somebody back from doing I, what they want to do because I will they, can't, agree. they can't do fractions. I will agree with you all to that point okay. because there are, I think, like China, they have China. Special, China. When you go to China. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you do the Trump with, like, mixed with Peter Griffin? <laughs> I said, China. When I go to China. <laughs> but when you go to China, <laughs> they have specialized schools. Okay. And, and it, I'm just saying, China, I'm sure there's all over the world, they have specialties. Where, yeah, you... He is stupid when it comes to math. Right. But this son of a bitch can play the hell out of a fiddle. Right. Just fiddle. Go. <laughs> That's Ladies Alabama and school. gentlemen, the number one Chinese fiddle player. Wouldn't that be the craziest thing? You go to Carnegie Hall and you hear the, the world's <laughs> greatest Chinese, Chinese fiddle player playing the devil went down to Georgia at Carnegie Hall. <laughs> Little old Chinaman. Oh, the devil went down to Georgia. He was looking for us. Oh, to you. <laughs> We are definitely getting banned now. That'd be all right. Okay. So I don't know. I, I, there's, there's got, you know what? There's got to be some sort of like balance here because half the football team, you know, they're not going to go to the NFL. Probably not getting a college scholarship. Well, that's fair. And they're skating by because, you know, they're having the TAs do all the work for them or whatever. I saw this more in college than I did high school, but I know it existed in high school. Uh, sure. So I'm not saying that's okay, but I think the extreme the other way is also not okay. Where if you're going to, you're, look, Let's let's say this guy is going in the NFL. Like he's he's truly gifted athlete. And you're going to take away two of his high school games in a 10 game season. That that's a big percentage yeah. of playmaking opportunity. Sure. Yeah. Because Pad them stats. Because he because he bombed one test. He don't know how to speak rights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is hard. <laughs> who kid uh, Ponix did not work for me. <laughs> so I don't know, man. Um, go ahead and go talk to the teacher. Good luck with that. Talk to the administration. Good luck with that. And then on a more broad 30,000 feet view, I think there's definitely some, some reworking we could do in our education system. Well, yes, but a topic for another day. Okay. If you're getting paid thirty thousand dollars a year, do you really give too much? No, not much. No, not much. I mean, you really gotta love what you're doing, right? You know, to get paid shekels. It's funny you say that because you and I both went to college with educators and people who were going to become educators. Yeah, and not one time in college did I hear any of my educator friends complain about the the money they were going to make. I never heard them complain about it. They, well, that's fair. You know what you're because walking a lot into. Of times, a lot of times in college, you don't realize the value of money. <laughs> well, you don't have any, right? Yeah. So somebody says, well, you can make 32000 a year starting. You're like, holy oh, cow, $32,000 a year. I could buy a legit car. <laughs> I could buy a car that actually starts. <laughs> right? be fantastic. I don't got to hit the button underneath <laughs> to turn the heaters on. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I get it, but... Anyway, uh, work around on all this is to homeschool your children. I love that idea. And I know everybody's got their kind of qualms about it, but I think it's fantastic. It Maybe another conversation for another day? Yes. Okay. I mean, I, I see where you're going with that, and I, I don't disagree. But then everything falls on the parent. Sure. And, I mean, that's... That's a big thing to tackle. Yeah, I, but uh, I, I'm ready for it. That's our plan. If we have kids, yeah. Now, I might 
I might ship them off to let them learn how to to, to read and write at the very beginning because I'm not sure I could tolerate <laughs> that stuff. But uh, let them get through elementary and then we'll talk. All right, let's get out of here and let's go to a little cinemize with these guys. Coop. Cinemize with these guys is brought to you by nobody because we don't have a new sponsor yet. But hopefully in the future, this will be a sponsor segment. Coming soon. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of, our podcast is 60 episodes old. We are. 60 60 years. 60 years. 60 years in podcast years. (laughs) I mean, Joe Rogan is like 2,000 years old. (laughs) he's, he's, He's... Tripled Methuselah. (laughs) So we're going to do actors and actresses that might surprise you that are in their 60s. Yeah. We thought they'd be pretty good. And then also this is kind of a trip down memory lane for us for some of the old movies that we have enjoyed. And so uh, I'm going to let Obeezy kind of start us off and give a a few. And you want to do males and then females? You want to kind of mix and match? We'll just, we'll we'll just, we'll we'll let Jesus take the will. Sounds great. (laughs) So Tim Meadows. Tim? Meadows. Not bad, I, did I bet not, not a lot of folks know who that is. It's it's Leon Phelps, the ladies' man. I bet there are some folks who don't know who that Still is. Still don't even know who that <laughs> is, but that's okay. <laughs> when all else fails, you got to do it yes, in the butt. Uh, do it in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> I hope none of the church ladies will listen to this. It's not my words, people. Not my words. I'm it's just a quote. really funny skit from like 25 years ago. Yeah, it was a great skit. I, I tell you what, talk about him just a minute. I'm going to look up when that first came out on SNL. So... Tim Meadows, man, he's done. You know, he started out, from what I can remember, in SNL, right? In the golden years, which I is because uh, I mean, you, you had you had two golden years. I think that's right. I think that's right. You had the you had the pre golden years, yeah, and then you really had that that stretch of what eight years, yeah, it just was solid, really good. Every episode, every Saturday was amazing. Yes. Tim Meadows was in that crew. Yes, he was. And he's gone on to make thousands of movies, probably not that many, but yep. he's he's got cameos in damn near anything that's done by Will Ferrell yep. or John C. Riley. A lot of the people that have ever done or that were on the cast with him of SNL, right. he's in there. Okay, that's true. He was also <laughs> on uh, the Goldbergs as the, uh, the yes. coach or the... I think one of the coaches yep, or something, yep. or one of the teachers. No, it was a guidance counselor on that show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> guidance counselor. <laughs> so he, he's done some wonderful stuff. This says 96. 96. Okay. The first first, instance. first first episode of The Ladies' Man. But it doesn't say first. It just says one of the, one of the best or something like that. The yeah. movie that came out was in 2000. So just the movie yeah. itself, we're talking 21 years ago. Man, so, that's... That's crazy. That's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. 2000. <laughs> yes. If you were born <laughs> February, what? I don't even know what to do. 15th. February 15th, 2000. You could be drinking a cold beer in a bar today yep. legally. You could you could drink with us right here to have a little uh, Odin skull legally. Oh, hell, that was 22 years ago. <laughs> I forget we're in 2022 now. <laughs> Oh my That's god! <laughs> I started it because I'm like, oh yeah, it's 21 years ago. <laughs> I hate you, sir. <laughs> See, and we weren't good at math. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I didn't make all state my sophomore year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's a great one. One of the ones that I found right off the bat was a man who looked like he was in his 60s for like the last 30 years, and that's Willem Dafoe. I mean, he, he's, he he's looked like 60 <laughs> for, for 75 years. <laughs> I mean, the first boondock season was like, God, this guy's old, man. Yeah, oh, 22, what the hell? <laughs> Did he eat a 70-year-old? Apparently. <laughs> great actor, though. Yeah, he's a, he's a great actor. Um Here's another one, Julia Louis Dreyfus. Ah, uh, so we were talking about Miss Dreyfus at the beginning <sighs> of the uh, well of the evening, if you yes, will. Yes, yes. Easy made the comment that she she got it going on. She is very attractive and still very attractive. Still very attractive. And that newest show she was she just starred in. I didn't watch it, but I heard pretty good things. And okay. she's, she's very pretty still. 
I will say, at the very beginning of Seinfeld, mm -hmm. she had the Amish haircut. <laughs> Not a fan. The Not Amish a fan. Haircut. <laughs> it's bad. Like if you watch it, you're like, ah. So she has her hair in a bonnet, or kind of like it's it's pulled back and and then. You know, oh, yeah. curly. Anyway, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. As soon as they got the hair stitch figured out, it was it was game on. Game on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fine. Uh, Kevin Costner and Tom Hanks both in their sixties. What? Yes, both in their sixties. Sixty-seven. Kevin Costner, sixty-five. What? Tom Hanks. <laughs> yeah, bro. Kevin <laughs> Costner. Heck yeah! And if you watch Holy Yellowstone, cow. like he doesn't look it. He's, he definitely he's a spry does. Dry old man, dude. You would <laughs> you would never guess. Of course. That that goes without saying. I mean, we're getting up there in the age. I hate that though. And you look back and you're like, "Well, hell, I don't feel like I'm 37 years old." Yeah, we talked last week about the rom coms. Yeah, and right. like you got Mail and those that he did with Meg Ryan. Good yeah, grief, that was that Meg Ryan is another long one. Long time ago, sixty something now. Is she? So yeah, you know, she's on the list. Okay, I tell you, another one's on the list on my list. Alec Baldwin. He's, Eric Berdrin. He's 63, and he knows his way around a six-shooter, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Actually, he doesn't know his way around a six-shooter because he shouldn't have shot that person. Allegedly. Dude, dude, how, how is he not in jail? How do you shoot somebody? And, and how are you not in jail? It's Eric Berdrin. <laughs> he uses the power of Chowman Mao or whatever his name is over yonder. Chairman Mao? Something like that. Kim hey. Jong Ear, <laughs> trying to break. You gotta quit bringing up these obscure references. People are like, what in the world are they talking about? <laughs> are they hot? <laughs> We're hot, old and skull. Possibly, <laughs> the old and skull's got us. It does. All right, a couple more. What you got? Um. Oh, I'll take you back to the college days. Okay, one of our favorite movies, and the two main actors. The the first one was probably my favorite role I'd ever seen him in until Reservoir Dogs. But Tim Roth. Oh, I know exactly in? what I know what you're going to say. Rob Roy. Heck yeah. Dude. He plays a great bad yeah, guy. Bad guy. Great bad guy. Yes, yes he does. Yeah, one, and of, then, one of the best villains in that movie is so underappreciated. It really is. You know why? Because it came out the same year Braveheart came out. Yeah, that'll do it. It will. That will do it. Because I think, okay, I'm not going to say it's a better movie. I don't think it's a better movie. But it's a different movie. <sighs> it's a different movie. It's not, you know, balls to the wall, freedom, we're going to liberate ourselves. It's right. not that story. But it's a good story and a great movie. And Liam Neeson absolutely kills it. The Neeson? Woo, he's good in that movie. That's and, another one, too. Oh, yeah. Because he's 67. 67? Yep. 67. And then his, uh, it, was it Rene Rousseau? Yeah. It was his counterpart. I yep. think she's in her 60s as well. Uh, great movie. If you haven't watched that, go yeah, check definitely that go out. check out Rob Roy. One, for That's sure. Uh, next up, we got uh, Leah Thompson. Okay. Remind me, Leah Thompson. You Sounds might familiar. remember her as the woman who had sex with Howard the Duck. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the biggest Marvel flop. <laughs> yeah, we talked about that a few weeks ago, didn't we? Or the woman who tried to have sex with her son oh, in Back right. to the Future. <laughs> She's got a very promiscuous sex life in Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, Cinematography, anyway. Sounds confused in her movies. <laughs> it's like, uh, well, let's, let's get you onto your same species, number one. All right. Then, uh, uh, so, uh, I, I, out of the family. <laughs> what are we going to do with her? That's a fair point. Good point. Denzel uh, Washington, 67. Really? Denzel, yes, sir. Yes, he sir. just doesn't age either. No. Nope. That black don't crack. I guess not. But uh, sticking with uh, Back to the Future, Michael J. Fox, and man. Look a little rough. <sighs> he, man, that Parkinson's is really doing a number on him. Yes, it is. So I'm hoping he's able to stick around for just a smidge longer. Um, next up, we got probably the godfather of the greatest sitcom ever, Ricky Gervais. Okay. Because he wrote The Office. Okay. Um, I like this new show pretty well, too. I, You know, I still haven't got around to watching that one. I, you told me about it and said it was really good. So It is good. I, I, I really like it. Um, it just ended three seasons. And, it, you know... It's British, though, huh? So yes, it is. So it's probably six episodes per season. 
It's shorter. I think it's ten. Yeah. I think it's ten. But I hate uh, when they do that. I tell you, the ending was good, and and sometimes those endings are not good, and I liked it. So I, I was pleased with that. Yeah. Um. Next up is Forrest Whitaker's Eye. <laughs> you know the eye. <laughs> you mean his good eyes in his sixties? The, the good eyes in his sixties. <laughs> that bad eye's been around a long bro. Time. That was that was the eye that the oracles used from Odysseus's time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just been passed along through the ages. <laughs> Somehow, Forrest Whitaker was able to catch it. <laughs> Could you imagine if there was actually a magical eye floating around from person to person to person for thousands of years, and for yeah, some reason, gave you the Forrest Whitaker ends up with it? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's pretty good, man. That's pretty good. Pierce, well, Pierce what, Brosnan, sixty-eight. Dang. Yeah, he's getting He's that there. old? Yeah, and he just did another action movie, like, last year. How old is, is uh, oh, uh, Super King Kong level 9,000? What in the world are you talking uh, about? Tom Cruise. How old is that guy nowadays? <laughs> I don't know. I bet he's in his 50s because I don't see him on this list. Hey, well, he doesn't age either, so. Gotcha. Anyways, um, I got one more. What do you got? George Clooney. Is oh, 60. Dang, really? Yep. Mm -hmm. George Clooney is 60. I figured he was a little bit older. No, he just turned 60. He had the gray hair for the last 20 years. But, know, right? uh, but he's just now 60. Um, My final one. Okay. Stifler's mom. <laughs> Jennifer Coolidge. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. We didn't do very many females. I had a couple of, of good mentions. Kim Cattrall. Uh, I liked her. Sex in the City. Yep. Catherine O'Hara, who did uh, Schitt's Creek. She's, Was that the mom from yes. uh, Home Alone? No, it's a different broad. Catherine O'Hara. Remember Schitt's Creek, the mom in Schitt's Creek. Yeah. Yeah, that's not the same lady. Yeah, that's the mom from Home Alone. Are you sure? I'm a thousand percent positive. Okay, because we looked that up. I could swear it was a different broad. No, nope, you're wrong. Okay. I'm right. That's fine. And then uh, I'll end with one of my favorites growing up was, um, oh, good grief, um, Julianne Moore. She's in her 60s now. <sighs> okay, I'll give you that one. Yep. She's for a ginger. <laughs> for a ginger, she's got it going on. So, you know, lots of folks getting on up there. People that we looked up to and idolized. Um, in our in our younger days, of course, hell, we're getting up there too. I so know, I know. As we age, so must them. I, I, I guess we're going to have to start watching younger actresses and actors so, you know, we don't feel so bad. Nah. They don't got it going on. They ain't got it going on. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Let's do a little Thinky Blinders. Two. Thinky Blinders. Doom, doom, doom. <laughs> you missed the lighter, by the way. I did miss the lighter, and I almost un didn't unmute our microphones, which would have been <laughs> No, that wouldn't great. be the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Said you're talking to nobody for a little bit. Uh -huh, uh -huh. All right, I'm going to go first. Nah. Mine is a question that's going to require a little bit of, of preparation. Not preparation H, but just a little prep time. <laughs> All right, however... I'm still too young to know what preparation H is. With the question, you might want to pack some preparation H. All right. Oh, is it going to make my sphincter tight? I don't know about that, but it could cause some reddage down there, oh. if you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so Red Bull is going to sponsor somebody in 2024 to live for a full year in the Amazon forest by themselves. And if they make it, they win a certain amount of money. It's, it's like a couple million dollars or something. Okay. They're going to give them, I think they said, four, four standard suitcases and full one... Full of Red Bull. Nope. <laughs> it, it will make you fly, apparently. That would be hilarious. You pack all this stuff to survive a year, and it, you open it up, and it's just Red Bull. <laughs> Red Bull. <laughs> Sponsored by Red Bull. <laughs> Red Bull gives you wings. Fly out of this forest. <laughs> anyway, so what would you pack if you had to survive in the Amazon for a year, and you cannot bring food? Oh, I don't need to bring food. I would need to bring food. Nah. I'm not going to go down there and eat those howler monkeys. I'm probably going to be food, just <laughs> being honest. Yeah, I've, I've so. seen a lot of Amazon <laughs> stuff, and there's some sketchy just, nonsense out there. I'll tell you what, just the size of the snakes in the Amazon, that'd be enough for me. Like, nah, I'm nah. not interested. Nah, I think I'm going to pass. <laughs> How long? A year? Nah, nah. I'll, I'll How go. much? $70 billion? <laughs> 
Nah, not worth it, bro. <laughs> I, I go for three days if you'll pay for the vacation down there. I go, I go see the, the Incan ruins or something. I go look at it from a distance. I don't want to be all up in that shit. <laughs> Especially for a year. <laughs> a full year, man, in the Amazon. Ooh, I mean, I get four suitcases worth of shit? I think it's four suitcases in a in a big duffel is what they're going to allow this dude to go in with. <laughs> For a year, bro. Bro, hell, give me, give me four suitcases of Red Bull. Well, okay, and then one duffel. I'm gonna, pack, <laughs> I'm gonna pack a baseball bat, right? A rifle, <laughs> maybe a thousand rounds. <laughs> well, so I'm gonna go AR. Okay. I'm gonna go AR. Thousand rounds. Thousand rounds gets you what? Three shots a day. Wow. I mean. That's if you're not maybe good may, enough. Maybe four thousand rounds. Just just no. Insane. I'm going. I'm going a thousand. <laughs> just, just going. I'm, I'm thinking weight here. Thousand round brick. Hey, okay. Ounces and whatever Heston says. <laughs> ounces <laughs> is something or another. <laughs> what, what is that stupid saying he says? I can't remember. So Heston gives this gives this wonderful presentation <laughs> on hiking. And, oh, it's ounces equals pain. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> ounce, ounce Heston comes pain. and gives this. He gives this presentation about how to make all your stuff lighter, and he's talking about like taking your tooth, your toothbrush, and like cutting it in half, mm-hmm. and and little bitty tubes, and like all this weird random like workaround stuff. I'm like, bro, just put it in your backpack. It's a toothbrush. <laughs> he's like, ounces equals pain. I'm like, what are you talking about? But he hikes for like 22 uh, weeks, days at a weeks time. at a time. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that makes sense. Okay, but. I mean, ounces equals pain. Right. So, <laughs> only a thousand. And then I'm definitely going to bring a machete. Yep. And a really good knife. Okay. A skin and knife. All right. And then I'll probably bring uh, quite a few different fire starter methods. Mm, good. Smart. Um, and then... Because it gonna, does get a little damp out there. Right yeah, here. yeah. Yeah. And then a... Uh, a as thick as it comes tarp mm. yeah and then i mean one good thing you're not going to freeze to death no uh, you're, and you're, actually it does get pretty chilly at night because you're wet so you've always got the chance of hypothermia that's true that's and then true. when that sun goes down things get real chilly yeah and the bugs man yeah the and bugs. then that was my other thing is i'm gonna try and get one of those Mosquito doohickeys. Oh, yeah, attach. yeah, Like the thermocells? Yeah, yeah. so that way you don't have to keep spraying yourself with DEET, <laughs> and it just kind of <laughs> does that little invisible barrier around you. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if some smart aleck packed a full suitcase of DEET, right? <laughs> and then he gets back, he wins all the money, then he dies of cancer like the next year. Because <laughs> it's all the poisoning. DEET <laughs> Poor guy, man. Never, uh, never saw it coming. Should have had that one full of Red Bull. <laughs> have you seen that Ranella episode where they go down there and they, they eat that monkey? Yeah. That tribe and they shoot that howler monkey? Uh-huh. I don't know, bro. Yeah. I don't he, know. I mean, hell, I could do it. I don't know. When, when he shoots him and, and that monkey uses his little hand and like ah. and like grabs the spot where... No. Owie. I don't think so. <laughs> it, no. Ah. He, <laughs> <laughs> he looks too much like folks for me to be eating him. I don't think I could do it. I mean, Grant, if you're starving, I'll eat the crap out of a howler monkey. But it, it, it was that was a rough episode. That was the roughest one that Rennell has done. Like it's the no only one I walked away was like, uh, I don't think I could do that. And given the situation, you could probably do it. Probably so right. apparently that's like shenanigans. A, that's like a delicacy down there. Oh yeah, the howler monkeys. Um. Yeah, I think that's going to be about it. Okay. Maybe some purification tablets. Yep, probably. No. My life straw. Mm. Yep. Or actually, I don't have a life straw, so I'm going to bring my Sawyer. Yep. Either one of those will work. Yeah. Sawyer probably got a little bit longer life on it. Yeah. I think 100,000 gallons is what yep, it'll do. 100, 000, that's the small one. 100,000 yeah. gallons. Um, and they are a little bit more cumbersome to use than the life straw. Uh, but the life straw, you got limitations with it because it's only 10, 10,000. Yeah. So I agree. All right, my friend, what you got for me? A little bit of a serious one. Okay. Ish, I guess. Because What's... What? what? I was going to say, because that's what we do around here is answer serious questions. Get super serial. Super serious. What's something you know that you do differently than most people? Quite a few things, sadly. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, first and foremost, I drink black coffee. Most people I know don't drink black coffee. I will drink black coffee in specific 
times. Okay. Colorado. Yeah, yeah. If I'm in the mountains and it's nice and chilly, I'll have a nice cup of Black Joe. Yep, followed quickly with a cup of Joe with half Baileys. No, <laughs> no, I just do the, the Black Joe, and then the next cup is just straight Baileys. Straight Baileys. <laughs> and one thing ice. <laughs> just look you. <laughs> Not too much. You don't want to water it down. <laughs> I, think, I think mostly what I do differently than almost everybody I know is I collect crap. I collect stuff that I find interesting that most people don't. Like tonight, before I came over here, I met some weird dude at Academy, like I was doing a drug deal, <laughs> to buy Coleman lanterns. Like, and it just, why? Why do you do that? one of those things. My granddad did it, my dad did it, and now I'm doing it. And, yep. you know, you've been to my shop. There's like a thousand lanterns in there. Uh, yeah. So, I don't know. I, I, I feel like, what do, they, what do they say that when you're growing up? You're an old soul? I'm an old soul. I like old crap. I like old stuff. I don't know. I like to Fair garden, enough. like cast iron. You like, do like to garden. I do. I like the Coleman's. I, I don't know. I just like old stuff. So I like that. I think, I think that's where I'm going to line up. And also driving. I drive like an old man, too. Yes, you do. Yep. And it's so, <laughs> uber frustrating. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's All right, just, bro. It is what it is. Speed limit <laughs> is 65. Yeah, that's true. Go at least 65. <laughs> You're the person that I'm casting fireball at behind you. Honking the horn, flashing my brights, fireball, fireball, fireball. <laughs> well, what's great about it now? I've got the uh, I've got the beast bourbon, right? Yeah, and so it only goes sixty eight. Like that's it. That's the top. Right, so, right. Uh, and then uh, my wife drove it not too long ago, and I was talking to her, and she's like, "Yeah, I got up to like 74, 75. Oh, I was no. like, "You're gonna break it! Don't no, do that! No!" no. <laughs> so I was like, "Was it shaking? <laughs> it got past seventy? Oh yeah, it was shaking real bad. <laughs> I just turned up the music. It was fine. It was not like <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize the suburban had a, a vibration mode. <laughs> Here's a nice <laughs> massage chair. <laughs> those vibrating seats are a great addition. What happened to those? <laughs> it's weird. You had to go eighty before before it would even yeah. kick in. <laughs> worked like a champ. Yeah, worked no like a No back champ. issues today. <laughs> I didn't know we were going to get a sauna effect, but it started smoking and coming through the cab and everything. It was great. <laughs> Heater doesn't work, by the way. <laughs> everything. It doesn't run anymore. Also, also it doesn't start. <laughs> I, by the way, I, I'm going to need you to jump start it because yeah. it's missing a motor now. <laughs> right. We coasted the rest of the way into town. Crap <laughs> fell off. I didn't want to stop. What are you going to do? <laughs> I was in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get out of Thinky Blinders. Still a little pastor and heathen. Coop. The pastor and the heathen. That close. Ah, well, who ne- cares? Next time, my friend. Next time. All right, I hear through the grapevine that you got a good one for this week. I do. Now, was this was this a right end, or was this one that you came no, up with? No, this is one that I, I stumbled upon. The heathen came up with one. I did. All right. So, what do people pretend is in the Bible, but is absolutely not in the Bible? Interesting. So, when you say pretend, do you mean things that... That are well believed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now I'll get to the pretend here in a minute. So <laughs> nice. that, that's that's an interesting. Let me give a couple of things that for sure are not in scripture that you think are. Stan. What? Stan. Oh yeah, that's Jesus. Stan. That's Jesus's brother. Yeah. Yeah. Stan Christ. <laughs> Stan and Jerry. <laughs> Stan. Damn Jerry. <laughs> Jerry plug. Jerry Christ. I'm a plumber. Jerry he's Christ. he's yeah, carpenter. You, you do the math. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First one. Uh, now this is a list that I looked up, and um, you can find a bunch of these lists, but these are some of my favorites. Okay. Uh, there's no apple in the garden. It just says fruit, not an apple. We've made it an apple because we've drawn an apple for little kids. Mm. That's why we believe it's an apple. There are not three wise men to come to visit Jesus. There are only three gifts, and it says wise men, plural. Where we, There's nothing there to make us believe that it was three, other than three gifts were given. Very interesting. Yes. Uh, Jonah was not swallowed by a whale. Jonah was swallowed by a fish. does not say whale. So I was really hoping you were going to say he wasn't swallowed. He was shat. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was spat back out by this uh, fish. So must have been a grouper. <laughs> maybe so. Maybe so. 
Uh, I have seen a video where a grouper swallows a white shark. A great white shark. What? Yes. So uh, it could have could have been a grouper. <laughs> and dude, those things get ungodly yes. huge. Yes, they do. And they catch them with rods and reels. Yeah, it is bananas. Like three hour fights to get that thing in. Yeah. And like you pull up a seven hundred pound grouper. That would be bananas. And you can't even keep them. Nope. You just got to take the hook out and. All right. Thanks for the fight. That was fun. Thanks, sucker. <laughs> See you, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, money is the root of all evil. Does not say that says the love of money is the root of all evil. And that is where the emphasis is on the love of money, not money itself. Oh. The phrases, this too shall pass, and or cleanliness is next to godliness. Neither one of those things are found in Scripture. Those are paraphrased. Not even paraphrased. They just don't exist. <laughs> not even not even something that's close. Yeah, because... There was a lot of unclean folk back in the day. That's right. They, <laughs> they were they, not close to godliness. There were hundreds of years before sanitation rules came into play. All right. Uh, People just shitting out in the streets. These next two are definitely things that Christians throw around. Okay. God works in mysterious ways. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord works in mysterious ways. And usually that's given to get out of answering a tough question. Fair enough. <laughs> Usually that's that's what we go to. And then also, um, love the sinner, hate the sin. I don't think I've ever heard that one. Nowhere in Scripture does that say. Is that in there? Love the sinner, hate the sin. Right. Now, Gandhi, Gandhi. actually said, hate the sin and not the sinner. And Augustine wrote, with love for mankind and hatred of sins. So we have people after the fact making that same claim, but it is not scriptural. It's not necessarily taught. And then last but not least, oh, I've got two. Oh, next to last, the penultimate, if you will. It's a good. Uh, it's good music. Good the music reference. Pen, penultimate. That's the measure before the end. Oh God, <laughs> <you> nerd! <laughs> Shut up. God will not give you more than you can handle. That is definitely not scriptural. Really? No. I've heard that a lot. That is not accurate. Typically what happens, God, you get yourself in binds you can't handle, and the only way you get through it is with God's help. Well, I shouldn't I shouldn't have taken out $75,000 in credit card debt. <laughs> well, I ain't got $75,000 in credit card debt. <laughs> well, how are you going to get out of this? I don't know. The Lord works in mysterious ways. That's, there you go. God's not going to, you know, he's, he's going to get me through. It's going to be just fine. Okay, and last God helps those who help themselves. Also not a scripture. Huh. That comes from Poor Richard's Almanac, written by one Benjamin Franklin. Very cool. And he is talking about the poor and trying to make it so you would lift yourself out of poverty. Quit Wait. being poor, poor. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> you know, if you weren't so poor, you wouldn't have this issue. Good Why point. are you so poor? <laughs> now, on to what people... How would you say? What was the original question? Things that we believe? Pretend. Oh, pretend, yes. I believe this comes mostly from televangelists and bad I pastors. Believe. That's who pretends things are in Scripture. Okay. And it's typically used as manipulation tactics. So we'll say things to move our people, if you will, to get them to do things that not necessarily the Bible calls you to do. Okay. First one... I want to mention is tithing. Yeah, the ten percent. The ten percent. There's no New Testament mandate to tithe. Nowhere in Scripture in the New Testament are you told to give ten percent. It's literally not mentioned. Jesus mentions the <laughs> tithe word twice, and both times it's in passing. And also remember that while Jesus is living, the new covenant doesn't exist. They're still living under the old covenant. So when he says tithe. That's not a mandate to us. And then all the rest of the New Testament writings, it says for us to give, but not to tithe. The 10% is for Old Testament Jewish people, not New Testament Christians. It is not a mandate. So what you're saying is the Jews are supposed to tithe, but the Christians don't got to give any money. No, they need to give. But there's not a any percentage. Money. No, they, they give, but there's not a time percentage. Time is money. Well, that's a good point. And Paul brings that up. Give your talents, your ability, your time. Uh, you need to be giving. You need to be uh, have a giving spirit. And there's no monetary percentage that's that's obligated I, there. Man, in that case, I've given about seventy five thousand dollars <laughs> in who? tithing. To who? 
to the world. <laughs> and the world is, is God's <laughs> oyster. <laughs> His church. No. My temple. <laughs> Your temple. I, I'm a temple for, for Jesus and God. And in this temple, there's a lot of sacrifice that I do. I, I think you're. And I feel like that's my my tithe. I think there's a lot of sacrilege in that temple as well. <laughs> that's <think>. fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll end with this one. Okay, this is one that's used. Uh, you probably heard this all the way through, like youth camps growing up, and even church in your in your modern era. Uh, I say modern era because we're freaking old. Because <laughs> we're old now. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you've heard this, raise your hand. Everybody, bow your heads, close your eyes. Say this prayer after me. And if you say this prayer and you accept Jesus in your heart, you're going to be saved. Yeah. Nowhere in Scripture does that say that. No, oh, yeah, no. It's not even, not even close to being biblical. So let me ask you, do okay. you use that prayer in your church? I do not. Oh, okay. I've, good good I've on you. never uttered that prayer one time. Good on you. So I will do you're it. You're a trendsetter. In, well, I just try to be biblical, and it's not biblical. If you believe in Christ, and that look, Jesus says, if you believe in me, you go to heaven, right? That's the end, that's the end, beginning and end of it. Yep. He's on the cross, one dude rejects him, the other one accepts him, poof, they go to heaven. Like that day. That's what he says. He says, Today you're gonna be in heaven with me, homie. Like you believed in me, you're good to go. <laughs> so what does it mean to believe in Christ? Well, it's not raising your head and praying a prayer. It's it's different. You gotta bow your head too. <laughs> <laughs> and close your, and eyes. close your eyes. And don't look around. Don't make anybody up feel uncomfortable now. We don't don't, don't <laughs> use that Forrest Whitaker. Right? <laughs> so those those are a few that are not a scripture. And also, man, look, if you go to church, I love church. And I love the church. And I love pastors for the most part. Be careful who you're listening to. Because we have a tendency to, to twist things and to manipulate people. And it, it gives everybody a bad name. Speaking of, have you started watching any of the gemstone, the righteous gemstones yet? No, but I've heard Bro. great things about it. <laughs> Bro. All right. You owe it to yourself. Okay. You must watch it. Very good, Pastor. And I want to remind everybody real quick before we do some updates and get out of here. If you have questions for any of our segments, for Thank You Blinders, for Cinemize, for uh, Hey Check, not Hey Check This Out. That's, uh, That's Hidden, Revival. Hidden Revival. Sorry about that. <laughs> for a, Hey, Let Me Ask You Something. If you got If you got any topics, you can send them to us. Yes. Throw us an email. Throw us a voicemail. You can go over to Facebook. We'll definitely get it, and we would love to answer some of your questions. We'll even let you do a call in. Yeah. All you got to do is let us know. We'll, exactly. We'll set it up, man. Yeah, bro. Let's do some updates. Do it. I got some repeated music with the updates. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry about the music, all right? We're going to get it figured out. It's going to be good. I just haven't got there quite yet. We had it down for we like had, three episodes. It, it was great. great. And uh, now it's it's no good anymore. we uh, we got to do something different. All right, so a couple of updates. Remember Eccentric Brewery. Go over there. Check those guys out online, eccentricbrewery.com. Go check them out on Facebook. Also, if you're in the Midland area, just go down there and have a beer with them. Yes. And apparently there's going to be a new Raspberry Stout. So, yeah. my goodness. Um if you go have one and take a picture, I'll send you a $1,000 because that'd be great. Okay. I'm not going to send you a $1,000. I was about to say, I'm about to drive over there right now. I will like your Facebook post if you will <laughs> <Ooh>, do that. <laughs> that's just as good as $1,000. <laughs> I might even comment on it. I mean, you know, it'd be a good time. Well, $2,000. <laughs> Thank you to Jamie and Aaron for all y'all have done for us. And we look forward to what this sponsorship is going to do for the year. Stay tuned for more sponsors this year. Uh, Eccentric Brewery has our flagship sponsorship. So yeah. they're locked in. But we might have some a few more kind of coming in in the next few weeks. That's right. I'm excited about that. And look, I don't know what you spend your money on, but I have a feeling that for five bucks every month, how often do you waste five dollars? You go get a cup of coffee. <sighs> five bucks. You go get a, a you go get a, a soft drink and a beef jerk. Five buck. You go get a McDonald's dollar menu. Five buck. You go get literally anything from the supermarket. Five buck. Five hundred bucks more like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hell, you can't get beef jerky for five bucks. Who are we joking? That's true. That's you can like get fifteen bucks. You get slim a... gyms for five bucks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can't get one. any good beef. One of the yardsticks <laughs> is five bucks, <laughs> and there's more grease in it than meat. Like, <laughs> awesome. go over to Patreon, drop us some love. 
Yeah. So we're trying to grow a Patreon. Five bucks. Five bucks. <laughs> uh, you can also do the Live Shippers uh, tier, and that gets you a ton of good stuff, plus some discount on merch. And you also get the Hidden Revival once a month. Actually comes out next Wednesday. It comes yes. out the last Wednesday of every month, and that'll be Hidden Revival number nine. And you got a full week, almost. You got six days to get up on that. So go over there and do Tonto. that. Tonto, jump on it. I am, I am committed to support our small businesses. Yes. So anybody in our group that has a small business, I'm going to support you. And having a podcast is a small business. That's right. So we would love some support also. And just a little bit of teaser, mm. Patty's Day is coming up. <laughs> now, we try to do it big on Patty's Day. We do. We had a pretty good episode last year. We did. And it was fun. And we're going to have to up ourselves this year. It's going to be tough. And we're really thinking about maybe a live podcast, or maybe not live, but on location. On location. Podcast episode down there at Eccentric. At Eccentric. So we're trying to work on all that right now. But, man, it's exciting. Got some good stuff coming up. You. Yeah. And then uh, I'll say last but not least, thank you for to our wives for supporting us all this way and allowing us to do this. And thank all of you guys for staying tuned and the OGs and the newbies. We appreciate you guys. And Matt... One final shout Woo-hoo. out. Thanks for the Patreon sub. We appreciate you guys. Let's do some ponder. We'll get on oh, out of here. All right, dude. Ponder this. If you identify a UFO as a UFO, then it becomes a FO. Hmm. Unless it has landed, then it's just simply an O. I like it. <laughs> uh, it's good. I mean, he's just part of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been episode 60. Nice. I was just the old age, man. The old <laughs> age is kicking you're in. You're coming up on that pass fail. This is episode 60 of Fraternize with These Guys. I'm BZ the Heathen. I am Pastor Pinewood. Stay plentiful, friends. And remember, no one needs the math skills as much as the teachers will tell you because uh, you got a supercomputer in your pocket. <laughs> It's a dang good point. When was the last time you used the Pythagorean theorem? Uh, well, not too long ago, actually. <laughs> Shut up, easy. <BZ. Bro, what? Okay. So, I'm going to kick it back to the router names. Oh, God. So This there is was worse than the April Fool's jokes. Not even close. <laughs> I guarantee you laugh at these. Okay. So, I had two I'll of them. To throw on, on these lists that I've been looking at, I actually created two that weren't on the lists. Okay. I had um, May the Wi-Fi Be With You. Love that. Yep. Obi-Lan Kenobi. Okay. That's a deep cut. That I like it. a deep cut. Yeah, I like it. But... Here's some other um, potent notables. Nice. Girls Gone Wireless. (laughs) (laughs) Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's Wi-Fi. Ah, that's a good one. It burns when IP. (laughs) Yes. Get it? Yes. IP address. (laughs) (laughs) I believe Y can fi. Okay. I believe I can fi. (laughs) I'll give it to you. This was for Nicole Oleo if she listens this far. (laughs) Porque <laughs> fai? Get it? That one. <laughs> Porque uh, is, is Spanish for <laughs> why? <laughs> Router. I hardly knew her. <laughs> what? <laughs> the Duke of URL. <laughs> and probably my favorite. Okay. Amish Rebel. Oh, that's so good. Brilliant, isn't it? Great. You gotta think about it for a second. You're like, that doesn't make... Oh. Yeah. That, that works on layers, bro. Yeah, like onions. <laughs> <laughs>